Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a 2D infinite parallax effect like the one you are seeing on the screen right now. And this will be created with the new parallax 2D node. Now, currently this node isn't actually in the stable build of Godot, but if you guys remember back to April 2nd, we actually got this info on the parallax 2D rework. And this was on the official Godot page, and you can read this, I'll link it in the description if you want to read through this. But basically it aims to redefine how we use Parallax in Godot as before and in the current build it's still kind of janky. Now there's also this GitHub page which kind of covers the feature and all the changes in more depth and I will also link this below as there are still some bugs that are being worked out. But currently it appears that this feature will be coming in version 4.3. So to get started I've just made a game scene and I've added a world environment to kind of change the brightness and contrast. You don't need to do this, obviously. But how this system works is we have this new node, and it's called a Parallax 2D node. And essentially, we're going to make a entire Parallax folder, which is going to be called my Parallax right here. And we're going to add all of these nodes inside of it. So I'm going to delete what I've already added here, and I will show you guys how to set it up in real time. So we have my parallax node right here. I'm going to add a child and the child is going to be a parallax 2D. And the first thing you'll probably notice is we have this experimental note in the description here. And this is just saying that it is not completed and the implementation of this will probably change in the future. But I believe that these are the basics of this node and Anything we get on top of this will just be bug fixes and further features. So we're going to select the Parallax 2D node, and this is going to work with our camera right out of the box. And you can see this if we go into the override drop down. We have this follow viewport property. And if we set this to true, it's going to be offset by the camera's position. If you do not want this behavior, obviously you can disable this and set your offset but we're gonna keep it on for now. Now the first thing we wanna do inside of this parallax is add a child to the first node, and this is going to be a sprite. Now for this sprite, I'm gonna call it ocean, and the texture is going to be my one texture. Now I've obtained these textures from opengameart.org, and you can find the link to these resources in the description below. After we've added this sprite to the parallax, we need to set up a couple properties. Now, inside of our parallax 2D, we're gonna go into the inspector, and the first thing I want to mention is the scroll scale. So this will essentially be the factor that is used for the scrolling motion of this parallax 2D. And since this is our furthest back texture, we want basically no movement on this. So I'm going to set the X value to 0.1 and you can immediately see that we also have the Y value set and we don't want this. We're only going to be tiling on the X position for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and set the Y value to zero. Now inside of the repeat dropdown, we're going to need to set the X repeat size to the width of the texture. And we can find the width of the texture by hovering over our texture resource and the dimensions say 576 by 324. So we just set the width to 576. And again, we're just going to leave the Y value at zero since we're not going to repeat on the Y axis for this example. Now you've also probably noticed this scroll controller node down here, and I've added this to help with the scrolling and it kind of acts as a player. I'm gonna show you how to create this. So we're gonna delete it. And then on the game node, I'm gonna add a new node, just a node 2D, we're gonna call it scroll controller like I had before and I'm going to add a script to this now the script is going to be called scroll controller and since I already have this script right here I'm just gonna replace it once we have a script on the node we're gonna open up the script we want to first define a new constant and I'm also gonna zoom in here a bit but we're gonna say constant and we need the motion speed of the camera so I'm just gonna call this speed and then we're gonna set it to 500 we're next going to go into the process function. So I'm going to say function underscore process. And inside of here, we're just going to define the axis of our input. So I'm going to say var axis, and we're going to set it equal to input dot get axis. And we're going to get the left and the right 
whoops, left and the right input events. Now, if you don't have left and right defined in your project yet, you can go up to the project settings, go over to the input map, and just add left and right and set up the key presses for those events. After this, all we're gonna do is say position.x plus equals axis times speed times delta. Now that we have this basic controller set up, I'm gonna add a camera node as a child of the scroll container. So we're gonna search for camera, and then we're gonna go to position smoothing, and I'm gonna enable it. And this should give us like a smooth motion. So if I go ahead and run the game now, we can use left and right to move the camera. And it is moving very slowly because this is our background layer. So this is gonna move um, at 0.1 speed but you can see that we have the smooth motion. Now we're also very zoomed out here. So what I'm gonna do is first, we're gonna add the rest of our parallax layers and then we're gonna tackle the zooming issue that you just saw there. But basically we're gonna go up to the parallax 2D and hit control D, which is gonna duplicate it and then hit control D again. And I'm gonna rename the sprites inside of these. We're gonna have a mist sprite and then we're gonna have a clouds sprite, and the textures for these are just going to be the second and third textures for our parallax, and then the scroll scale values are gonna be a bit different, so for our second one, I'm gonna set it to 0.6, and for our third one, we're gonna set it to one. Now, if we run the game again, we have all of our layers um, offset, and they're kind of working, but you can see that we're still very zoomed out. Now, your project also might look slightly different as well if you haven't set up your parallax's position. So I've set it to be centered on my screen, but if you still have it at zero, zero, and you run the game, you're gonna have an effect that looks kind of like this, and we obviously don't want that either. So the way to fix this is, first of all, by doing what I just said, is setting the position of your parallax so on the top node, we actually need to set the X and Y to half of our screen dimensions, which you can get by going up to project settings, go to the general tab and under window, we have the width and height. So we're gonna do 1152 by 648. And then inside of each of these fields, we can just type divided by two, and this will center our parallax. Now I'm also gonna go down to my camera, and since the scale of my textures are about a quarter of the size of my viewport, I'm gonna set the zoom of my camera to two. And this is going to snap my camera to perfectly fit around the textures. Now your textures might be larger and fit automatically, or they might be smaller and you might have a different camera value, but this is just what worked for me. And now if we go ahead and run the game, we have a perfectly working parallax effect. Now there's another way to fix this if we have our camera zoomed out. Maybe the height of our textures was taller, but we still wanted to have the seamless repeat because right now it's kind of uh, jittery. Well, if you go into the parallax node, there is this repeat times property. And we can actually increase this to three. And that's because every time we increase it, it will switch from adding a texture from the left side to the right side. So if we set it to three, we're gonna have the centered texture and then one texture on each side. And this way, at more zoomed out levels, the texture will still scroll properly and we won't have any jittering. Now, if we go ahead and do this for the other two parallax nodes, let's just set the repeat to three. This will obviously create a nice effect. And if your texture was taller, this would be how you'd want to do it. Now there is one more way to fix the jittering problem. And I'm gonna go ahead and reset the repeat of all of these. And that is to actually increase the scale of the parallax. Now you might be thinking you'd want to increase the scale of the entire folder. And we can go ahead and try this, but even though it looks good in the viewport, this will actually offset the screen position and it will not really work as expected. Now, I don't know if that's a bug or just something I'm looking over, but the easiest way I've found to do it is just set the scale of each of the parallax 2D nodes individually. So we're gonna select all of these 
um, with control, then go over to transform and set the scale to two. And this will basically do the same thing the camera did with the zoom, except it will do it for the parallax layers um, respectively. That's about it for the parallax system. Now again, this is not currently in Godot. This is not in the main build, but it will be soon. So if you're working on Godot version 4.3 or later, there's a pretty high chance that you're going to be working with this system. Now I'm assuming that this is going to be the way it is in 4.3, but since these features aren't actually in the official build yet, they are subject to change. So if there are a few properties that are different or the general system just works different, let me know in the comments and I'll make an updated video. But just thought I would show you guys this new system as it is pretty different from the old way and wanted to help you guys out. But thanks for watching the video and I hope you learned something new. If you wanna see more content like this, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You can also join the Discord server, which is in the link below. And here you can get help with game development and things like Godot. And you can also promote your work or your projects with programming or game development related topics. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.